Hey everybody, thanks for joining me for another Make and Tell Tuesday. Today I'll be doing some watercoloring using something similar to the no line watercolor technique, except for instead of an outline image, today I'm going to be using a solid background stamp. So I'm starting this video uh, kind of halfway through my project here. This is a technique that I've had in mind for a while that I wanted to try and it is working out pretty well so I thought I'll just turn this into a Make and Tell Tuesday for you guys. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using kind of the same principle of a uh, no line watercolor technique where you stamp using a light color ink or a disappearing ink and then watercolor and your outlines disappear. But instead of an outline image, I am using the background stamp, our fresh floral background stamp. And so this is actually a solid um, image. You can see it here. I have it stamped in pink ink so you can get an idea, of course, of what that looks like. So to do this technique, I have actually stamped it onto a panel of watercolor paper. This is Arches 110 pound cold press watercolor paper. And I used a waterproof light gray ink. And so this is sea salt from Tailored Expressions. And the reason you want to choose something waterproof is because you don't want that ink color moving around when you add the water, which is, if it's not waterproof, it's going to end up just kind of muddying your images and it will actually kind of let loose and move around on your paper along with your watercolor. And that's not what you want to happen. And so I chose this, this is a great ink for this technique because like I said, it's waterproof and it's really, really light in color. So it's not going to interfere too much with the color of your watercolors. And so I have this partially painted already. My intention when I started out was to watercolor the entire panel, but as I'm going along here, I'm kind of liking how this is looking with just portions of it watercolored. And so I think I'm going to finish off watercoloring down to kind of create this colored effect across the front of my card. And I'm going to leave some of these areas over here, just the light uh, stamping for kind of a, just a fun look. And so this technique is really pretty simple. It's just a matter of watercoloring these images. And so I'll just kind of go ahead and keep working on this with the camera rolling. So these larger flowers, I'm just going over top of my stamped image by wetting that flower. And I showed you my solid stamped panel. I'm keeping that next to me as a reference here, just in case I need uh, to take a look at some area that's maybe super light and I can pick that out a little bit easier if I have that as a reference. And so I have my paint palette here filled up with some colors from my Mission Gold watercolor set. And so with this flower wet, I'm going to just drop in that watercolor over top of that flower. And I'll just start building up the color that way. And then as you can see on these two flowers that are already done and already dry, I added more detailing once it was dry. So while that's still wet, I'm going to drop in even more color in some of the areas that I want to be darker. Down here at the base of the flower. And then you can see this area here where it's darker in the back side to differentiate the front petals from the back. That I also added when it was dry. So I'm gonna move on and let that dry and we'll add more detail later. So I'm gonna move on to this little flower cluster right here, which I was doing those little clusters in a bluish purple 
watercolor. And you don't have to follow the stamping exactly. Watercolor by nature is a looser sort of technique, and so it's okay if you're not following the lines on the stamped image exactly. Since that ink is nice and light, you won't see that through your background, through your painting anyway. So I'm gonna let those dry, and you can see on the ones I already have finished, I went back and added a darker center using a little more concentrated color. So I'm just going to continue on in that same way, filling in all of those areas with the colors from my palette. Okay, so now that I have most of my first layer filled in, I'm going to go back and add some more detailing to some of these flowers, especially these bigger ones, which right now just look like blobs. And so we're going to add a little more detailing. And so like I said before, I'm going to go back and just add some darker color into some of these areas to make it look like there are front petals and back petals. I'll also add some lines coming up from the bottom. So it's just some simple brush strokes starting at the base and then just pulling upward. And then I am going to, once this is completely dry, go back and add the stamen with uh, some black watercolor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this second flower. I also like to add some details to the leaves and also those little flower centers. So I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna add some veins to some of these leaves. Okay, so the panel is pretty well finished, except for we have to add the stamen to those last uh, two flowers. But before we do that, I'm going to add one more finishing touch, which I already did to this part of the panel that I had finished before I started the video. As you can probably see, I added just some really light, um, kind of a shadow effect. And I like to use uh, Payne's Gray watercolor for that. It's a, it's a really pretty kind of bluish gray, and I use 
just a little bit of it and a lot of water to get just a really light effect. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of go around some of these images and create just kind of a shadow effect. Don't outline them on all sides, just pick a side and almost like they're creating a shadow. And so I'm going to do that just along this side of the images. And not, don't just, you know, outline it perfectly, just kind of choose a few areas don't have to get super technical about you know where the shadows would be falling and all that business but just just kind of go for it and don't get too caught up in those details it's just to help uh, kind of set those images apart and really makes them pop off of the paper All right, and then I'm going to pull out my black watercolor and just a little liner brush and add some of those stamen. Okay, so our panel is finished. I've pretty much finished watercoloring every area that I want to on the card. I like how we have this um, swath of color going across the front of our card and then just these subtle tone on tone colors just in the corners. And so I'm going to go ahead and add a sentiment and maybe a couple other details and finish this off into a card. Well, thanks for joining me for this week's Make and Tell Tuesday, where we put a little spin on the Novaline watercolor technique. I hope you'll give it a try and thanks for watching.